If you've never had Cantonese roast duck, you are definitely missing out. This incredibly tasty and amazing duck dish is traditionally eaten on the weekends, but I'm gonna show you how to make it so you can have it any day of the week. Let's get started. How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna be making some Chinese roast duck. The first thing you wanna get is yourself a duck. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna prep this. It's a lot easier than you think. It just takes some time. And as usual, all the ingredients will be linked in the description box down below. Now open up your duck. If you see globs of fat, you wanna remove it. Now, since this has a lot of blood and stuff on the inside, I'm gonna rinse out the cavity, make sure it's nice and clean. You wanna place your duck on a wire rack. It'll help this thing dry. Now, if you don't have meat hooks, you can leave it on a wire rack above the sheet tray. You want the air circulation to dry out the skin of the duck. I'm gonna hang this over my sink and for the next two hours, I'm gonna let this hang out here to dry out the skin. While our duck is hanging out, we're gonna make our sauce. So we'll have hoisin sauce, oyster sauce, light soy, Shaoxing wine, five spice powder, black pepper. Let's add some white pepper and a little bit of sesame oil. You want this to be as thick as a traditional like American style barbecue sauce. You should be able to taste all the ingredients that you just put in here. Pretty standard aromatics. We have some ginger, shallots, garlic, star anise, and scallions. For our basing liquid, you're gonna to need to use maltose, which is a syrup made from fermented grains like barley and rice. It is super sticky, so grease up a spoon. Now we're looking for around at least 100 grams of maltose and about 100 grams of red Chinese vinegar. Don't use red wine vinegar, they're two different things. And some salt and about two and three quarters cups of water and some star anise to flavor this up. Now, what we're looking to do is heat this up to dissolve the maltose. You're looking for a nice red pinkish color. Now, after two hours, you can see that the skin is nice and dry and leathery. Now we're gonna put in our, basically our duck barbecue sauce inside. Make sure you go all the way into the duck's cavity and massage the seasoning all around the inside. Next step, we're gonna add all of our aromatics. Make sure you go all the way in. Earlier in the video, you saw that I had a bulb of ginger. I did go and slice them and smash them a little bit to help release all their essential oils. Clean up the skin a little bit. You don't want this sauce on the outside. Now I'm gonna show you how to seal the duck. Either with a bamboo or metal skewer, this is how you're gonna do it. Go in and over and under. Repeat this process until you reach all the way to the top. The purpose of doing this is to keep all of those seasonings and flavorings and the juices that will accumulate during roasting inside the duck. Now, at the end, you wanna push the skewer into the meat of the duck and give this a little tug so all the skin isn't bunched up. Now remove the legs and the wing tips. If you're making stock, you can do that. Otherwise, just toss them. And now it's time to baste the duck with some boiling water to tighten up the skin and our maltose vinegar mixture which is going to give us a beautiful color during roasting. You want to baste your duck with this boiling water all over to tighten up the skin as you can see here. There's no specific amount of times you wanna do this. You just wanna do it until it's nice and tight. Now moving on to the maltose bath. Same rules apply. Baste it all over the duck. Now, unlike me, make sure that you have a large enough pot so you're not getting this liquid all over the place. Again, Hang your duck or let it dry on a cooling rack for two hours before it goes into the fridge for 24 to 48 hours. This is gonna help the meat absorb the flavor and the skin tighten up even further. All right, so it's been 48 hours since we put the duck in the refrigerator. Let's go check on it and see how it looks. After 48 hours, the skin is really nice and dry. The marinade and the aromatics are doing its work. Now you can go in with tweezers and pull out all the additional feathers or you can torch and scrape them. It's important to let your duck come up to room temperature about an hour or so before you roast it on a wire rack or a roasting rack. Look at that, 375 for five minutes. After five minutes, we're gonna turn it down to 350 for an additional 25 minutes. That's going to be an initial 30 minutes. After the initial 30 minutes, you wanna rotate your duck and it goes back into the oven at 350 for an additional 30 minutes. We're looking at one hour total roasting time and this is the result. Now this Chinese roast duck is not Peking duck, which is known for its crispy skin. 
But if you want your skin to be a little bit more crisp, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that after we make some scallion oil, which is just some scallions, salt, and really hot oil. On a wire rack over a pan, I'm just spooning some hot oil over the skin to let it crisp up. And as you can see here, it's working beautifully. We're gonna save all the pan juices as well as all the juices inside the duck to make a delicious sauce. Now strain your pan drippings and we're gonna add some more aromatics to this. I have some ginger, crushed garlic, star anise, some scallions, and a little bit more hoisin sauce. Add a little bit of water, bring this up to a simmer while stirring and adjust your seasoning. You might need some more black pepper, you might need some salt. Only you can make the sauce perfect for yourself. Now it's time to carve the duck. This is how I've seen it done at many Chinese barbecue shops that sell roast duck. They just chop up the neck, chop the head, and just split the carcass. Chopping it all up with bones and all. This is gonna be an amazing dish. It smells so incredible. I wish you guys could smell this right now. Chopping up this duck is by far the hardest part of this entire recipe. This is gonna be so awesome. This is my plate of duck. Look at this. And now to eat this, the way that I grew up eating it is with some nice crusty bread, that sauce that we just made, add a little bit of scallion oil to this. It's always wanna break in the palate, stimulate the palate with the first dip of the crusty bread with the duck sauce. Mm. Oh my gosh. And this is just the bread and the sauce. Mm. Here is a piece of duck with the skin still nice and juicy. Forget, it. let's just eat this. That is so good. I don't know if you can hear the skin. Now it's not as crispy as Peking duck because this duck isn't known for its crispy skin. It's known for its succulent, juicy, flavorful, meat oh and that little oil trick at the end does help crisp up the skin a little bit but you're nowhere near peking duck crispy but yeah just dip this in here oh my gosh <laughs> now traditionally this is eaten on the weekends so if you want this on saturday prep it on thursday and then cook it on saturday just like how we just did 48 hours in the fridge or at least 36 to 48 hours amazing mm. Look at that, juicy, tender. Oh, this is exactly what I want. There's really no elegant way to eat this. You just have to go barbarian on it. I know what I'm doing for the rest of the day. I'm gonna eat this. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining in. Definitely give this recipe a try. It's a lot easier than you think. You just need some patience. Take care of yourselves, and as always, peace.